Hello, Bumpy Vic Squiggums here, and I am continuing with my Let's Play of the Banner Saga. This is the one, the true, the real, episode 15. The last episode was actually episode 14, in disguise, that's right. It was incognito, and now I have revealed that to the world. Also, I made a mistake and thought it was episode 15. Shame on me for lying to you all. Regardless, I am here, I am ready. My coughing is... <coughs> But it's there, it's still lingering. And I feel worse today, but better for coughing, if that makes any sense at all. In fact, I'm going to cough right now. And there you have it, I have coughed. It is official. It's time to get started. So as we go to get started here, I'm going to talk to Ivan. And I'm going to tell you guys that I have some pretty exciting stuff underway. I don't know if I can actually say that's true. But I'll tell you about it as we progress through this episode. So here we are as Rook. You're really worried about her, aren't you? What? Oh, Juno? Worry doesn't begin to describe it. If she doesn't find us here, or something has happened to her... Are you sure what you saw was real? It could have been a dream, or... I don't know. You were pretty exhausted. I... I don't know. To be honest, I'm not sure anymore. Everything is a blur. Um, don't tell the others I said that. I have to hope it wasn't just a dream. Think about what to say. Hmm. What's it like to be a mender? How exactly does weaving work, anyway? Why is Bellower still following us? I won't take any more time. Uh, what's it like to be a mender? Being a mender? I guess I never really thought about it like that. It's just part of me. They knew very young that I would join the order. Born into it, you could say. My mother and father, both menders. The guild is for lots of people now. Builders and healers. Do they all pull lightning out of the sky? No, no, that's not normal. It's one of the reasons I know Juno. She's one of the council. She helps me control things like this. So we don't end up scaring people. Alright guys, so this will be a wonderful editing nightmare again. As I try to... Uh, mute dodge the coughs. Alright, so. How exactly does weaving work? Well, the hardest part is usually seeing the threads. Everything is part of the tapestry. It's made of threads woven together. If you can see the threads, you can manipulate them. I don't know how to explain it, really. It's like trying to play a harp with invisible strings. Look at my staff, for example. Some members carve intricate patterns in the wood to help them remember the shapes of... Uh, er, like I said, it's hard to explain. Why is Bellower still following us? I saw Grofheim as it burned. Ivan gets a faraway look in his eyes. The sunder blew through it like a tempest. The varl fell in the thousands. Most of the sunder left the city and headed south. <coughs> Excuse me. Who knows where they are now? They might be destroying every town they come to, or heading toward Arborang. Bellower stayed in Grofheim, just for the sport of it, I think. As we fled to Eifen, Eifen Tarfenhofen, I thought uh, he must want to wipe the Varl off the map completely. But then, he came after us. Maybe he knew Ivor was the one who killed Ray's. Maybe, but I... Let's just make sure he doesn't catch up. Okay, sorry about that. Alright, do you think this is the end times? I... I don't know what to think. I wish I could give you a better answer. Even if we escape the dredge, that serpent said a darkness was covering the world. I don't know how long that will take. Or what it means, even. I'm just trying to solve one problem at a time. The menders are in Arborang. If we can find ships and make it the capital... Make it the capital? We might have a chance. Make it to, I'm assuming, the capital? Mm, I guess I won't take any more time. No, it's okay, Rook. I appreciate the talk. It's good to stay grounded. I spend all day worrying about serpents or sunder. I think a lot of people are intimidated or scared, maybe, of me. Don't worry, it's nothing new. I'm used to it. Maybe sometime we can talk about things that don't include the world ending. That would probably be useful. Probably be useful. Alright, so... What to 
do what to do. I know exactly what to do. Really wish I could do that. But, instead, buy many supplies for days. Oh my gosh. This is terrible. That's how much renown I have left. Oh. We got a week's worth of supplies. Hopefully, it'll get us to wherever we're going and we'll get more. Well, let's go take a look at our heroes. Things are just not pretty at all. Hey, Krumer's back. Woot! Alright, he's gonna switch with Rook. I know we have 10. And that is enough to get her up there, but before we do that, this is enough to promote her? See, I don't know if that's worth it, though. I don't feel like Oddleif is exactly the most powerful of let me take a look at what her ability was again. Plus two range, 100% chance to hit. Wow. That's kind of nice. So, yeah, I think I'm going to actually level her up. <coughs> I like that out actually quite a bit. And in fact, she has 100% chance to hit. Yeah, it might be, it might be beneficial to... Mm, let's do it this way. We'll max that first, and then we'll max that. 100% chance to hit, that means I'm guaranteed to always do at least 3 damage. Or is it going to be 1 because I can't boost? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how it all works yet. I'm, I'm still struggling to learn, I suppose. Alright, so we're going to roll out with what we have. <coughs> or something. Do we have to leave? Are we really going to leave? Doesn't seem right. No one's hurt. I guess we leave. Rook, wait, please, Ivan begins. She said she'd be here. We need her. You can tell he's terrified of leaving this, though he'd be giving up on Juno. I'm sure she'll catch up with us. She's not coming. Okay, just a little longer. You tell Ivan you'll stick it out a little longer, but not certain how long you're willing to wait yourself. Everyday loss becomes more precarious. Guess I rest? A scuffle has broken out in front of the houses. Thief shouts one of your people as a group of strangers flee from your camp. Adleif is already running their direction. They took our supplies you hear from nearby. Chase the thieves, try to talk it out with the locals, tell the caravan to get ready to leave immediately, ignore the theft to protect the caravan. Let them go. You shout before anyone rushes off. Better keep what we have than chase after something that's gone. Townspeople continue to peek out from the windows and around corners, but nobody makes another swipe at your supplies. <coughs> Alright, I'll rest one more day, but do no better show up. A random assortment of people from the caravan confronts you. Listen, says one. We don't feel safe here, and I don't know anything about the menders or whatever, but we're going to leave, and I hope you'll join us. Looks like a couple dozen people, farmers and fighters alike, feel the same way. Encourage them to stay, wish them well, refuse to let them leave, join them and get ready to depart. Encourage them to stay. They make it very clear they're not interested in discussing the issue, shaking their heads and setting out. Without the rest of the caravan ready to go, there's little you can do to stop them. You hope they make it, and you hope that you haven't made a mistake yourself. Wow, that's a pretty big hit. Oh, and Varl left too? What? Wow. Alright, this is going to be the last rest I go through, man. You better get your act together. This chick better show up, man. Okay, well, she's not showing. So now I have the... And more renown on supplies, because that's what I wanted to do. Look, oh, wait, please, Ivan. She said she'd be here. Alright. Resting again. Again. And again. And again. Okay, well, she's not. Ivan looks out across the lake with a, thou with a thousand mile stare. He says nothing. 
We've got problems, says Ivor. The whole place is flooded. We could try to walk the muddy parts, but it'll be slow going. We could try to float the caravan over the lake, but we might tip or get stuck. Or we could just go around the whole thing, but no idea how long that'll take. What do you think? We could attempt to ford the river, caulk the wagons and float across, pay some locals to help, detour around the flooding. Well, all I know is I just wasted a lot of supplies. And that's not good. That's really, really not good. Oh boy. Um, we don't have food. We're, we literally have one day of supplies. This is terrible. I'm very bad at this game, guys. It should be apparent. <laughs> Alright, we're going to detour around. You leave Sigur home and start to feel your way around the flooded area, which has washed out the road completely. You continue far into the wooded area, which slows you down even further. Already committed, you hope you didn't make a grave mistake. You leave Sigur Sigurholm in a hurry, hoping to outface the dredge that might be that must be close behind. As you continue further south, you first hit overgrowth, then the forest behind, or before finding land that is dry enough to follow back around. By the time you circumvented the mud, you've lost a lot of time. I hope it doesn't haunt you later. Oh, it's gonna haunt us. It is definitely going to haunt us. Ugh. My people are starving. Curse Juno and her lack of showing up in this. Just start eating the people who decide to leave. Or die. We could be cannibals. It works. A trail of blood leads to a clearing where you find a large wounded barrel. Dinner! Uh, he is nine on his shield, swearing at no one in particular, and occasionally slamming his cudgel on the ground. If not for the heavy bleeding, you'd leave this one alone without a second thought. You can help if you want it. In a heartbeat, the barrel's on his feet, swinging his, swinging his massive weapon. You jump clear of his cudgel and smashes through the trunk of a tree. Your party scatters to avoid the falling timber. Once you recover, the barrel is long gone, leaving only... Another trail of blood, which you decide against following this time. Well, at least I'm quick-footed. Fleet-footed? Swift-footed? I don't know. I'm something, and there's feet involved. That's all that I really know. <laughs> As you're about to head off to sleep for the night, Anna pulls you aside. I have a couple concerns I wanted to speak to you about. In private, he says. You find a quiet place to talk. What's on your mind? We've been starving for a week! How well do you know the people traveling with us? How many strangers are in the caravan now? Uh, who are you worried about? I've been watching folks since I joined you. Your companions from Skogger, they're loyal. I mean, it seems pretty clear they died to protect you. I suppose I'd do the same. What about the Varl? You don't even know half those warriors. You're telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now? After everything that happened in Ivan Tarfenhofen? They joined us voluntarily. I trust Ivor to handle it. If they're willing to fight, it's worth the risk. Could be more cautious. And they might buy it voluntarily put a sword in your gut, too. What happens the first time the Varl don't want to do what you tell them? If Krumer gave the word, I guarantee at least half would follow. Let's be honest, they could take this caravan by force at any time if they wanted to. You may have a point, which you suggest. I've got no choice but to trust them. They haven't. It doesn't mean they won't. They're not the biggest problem, though. There's a mender with us. A mender who pulls lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. Myself, I think we lucked out when this mentor didn't show up in Sigurholm. Ivan's just the apprentice? What in the depths is his master capable of? Think about it, Rook. What do you really know about Ivan? I heard they were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dredge started showing up. There's an enormous... Uh, enormous... There's an enormous... <coughs> there's an enormous serpent. Then. Then an enormous serpent shows up. At Ivan Tarfenhofen, after tearing the world in half, and takes one look at Ivan and bolts. Suddenly they need our help instead of the Mender Council? How does that make any damn sense? You make some valid points. 
You might be distorting what happened. Ivan could have taken control long before now. Points you should have made on your own. I'm grateful for what you've done to get us this far, Rook. But it's always been about trust. I think it's time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing personal. Suddenly you gasp for air when you look down. Anoff is holding a knife buried deep in your ribs. What? Your vision blurs and blood fills your sight. You gasp again. There's a bird whistle and the camp becomes a blur of motion. Anoff's spiders from Frostfeller leap into action, cutting people down. As Oddlave turns to fire on the men, Anoff runs her through and pulls a blade from her back without even breaking his stride. She drops like a sack of flour, on head straight for a lead, who freezes in unbridled terror. You rise to your feet through the pain, Eggle and Oddleaf are dead. Somehow you find the strength to cleave the nearest traitor in two, but you can't find the breath to shout. You think your lung might be punctured. Anna clutches a lead's wrist amidst the commotion, tosses her bow aside, and pulls her into the deep woods. Her eyes meet yours across the campsite. No, her lips say, though you can't hear the words. A dozen men appear between you as Ivor steps into view, as fearsome as you've ever seen him. Well. Fantastic. Hey. Alright, well, what do we do now? What do we do now? Mogan, my friend, you're rejoining our ranks. Surprise! You two are swapping. Alright. Well, I assumed at some point I'd be betrayed, but I figured it'd be Eccle and not Anuf. Big mistake. Big mistake. Alright. So is a let somewhere I need to protect her? No. Well, I gotta say, we're in a really terrible position for this fight, but whatever, let's do it.
better than us. Shiv in my rib going down unless So, where is Alette? shouts Ivor, tearing through the nearest bandit, but you're already hobbling into the deep woods when, or where they disappeared, ignoring the battle raging behind you. In a haze of pain, you start to think you've lost their tracks, then you hear Alette screaming in the distance, followed by silence. You tear through the trees. In a small clearing, Alette lies with her back against a tree. Her hands and her clothes are covered in blood. She stares vacantly ahead, unblinking. Beside her is the body of Anif, an arrow buried in his right eye, as if placed there by hand. She looks in your direction, then at Anif. I killed him, she says. That's my girl! Alette, are you alright? You cringe as much from the pain as the appearance of Alette after her bloody struggle with Anif. No, I'm... I'm, I'm not hurt. I, I had no choice. Dad, your chest, you're bleeding! Suddenly she is at your side, putting pressure on the wound. I can... I can fix this. Where is my needle? Oddleaf! Anyone? Ivor, I found them. Just as your sight goes black, you see Ivan, Ivor, and Alette standing over you. He's going to make it? Your eyes open to the sound of Alette's voice. Normally a wound like that. I only hope I did enough. I'll survive. Dad! Alette stops herself from hugging your bandaged chest, pulling your head to her instead. The words come out easier than you expected. Oddly, it's a good thing Ivan was here. She's going to pull through. What? Though it was a nasty wound. We managed to kill most of those traitorous sons of bleeps, and the rest fled into the woods. There were a lot of people I couldn't save. You did everything you could, Ivan. Nobody expects you to raise the dead. Ivan frowns deeply, putting a hand to his forehead. Why did Anif do this, Rook? He was talking to you right before it happened. He had been planning it all along. He thought my leadership would get us killed. Utter bastard. All this time, we had no idea. 
Echo killed a good half dozen of Onif's men by himself. He told me Onif was running Frostveller the whole time. He left Frostveller behind when he saw a better opportunity. Guess that relationship is over. Echo was always just the barking dog you put in the yard to find out who your enemies are. It was no accident Onif went after those of us from Skogger. He must have thought with us gone he'd take the banner and the rest would fall in line. Or at worst they'd all they take all the supplies for themselves and leave the rest of the rest as dredge bait. Surprise! There are no supplies. Let's see. Next I next leveled on it right there by starving my people beforehand. That's right. Next level, baby. We have to be more careful. We can't just let anyone join the caravan anymore. No, nothing changes. We're not like him. Where do you draw the line, Ivor? I don't know, Rook. I really don't know. None of this changes the fact that Bellower is out there somewhere, following us. That swamp around Sigurholm might buy us some time, but we've got to keep moving. Your body aches all over, but Ivor's right. The road calls the caravan is already starting to pack up camp. Well, good. We didn't lose anything. I need food! I'll talk to Oddleif. How is the wound? You notice Oddleif wince as she rises to greet you. It's doing a lot better. When I saw it happen, I thought for sure. Uh, well, I'm gl really glad you're... You would have missed me, Rook? She smiles. Without Ivan, that's all you could have done. Instead, you'll have to put up with my crap a little longer. It still aches like you wouldn't believe, though. Oh, well, maybe you would. I heard you took a stabbing yourself. I guess things could have gone worse. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Sometimes it's lonely since my husband died. I guess it's, I'd say it's more like being alone, even surrounded by all these people. Not like I don't have enough to worry about, though. I'm glad to have Alette around. And you, Rook. What do you think about the caravan? You mean, should we start kicking people out? That's a tough one. Usually I'd be the first to give you a dirty look for suggesting it. On the other hand, I got a sword in my back. Oddly thinks for a long moment before sighing. Don't send anyone away. Just make sure nothing happens to Alette. I'll let you get some rest. Okay, thanks. I'll take you up on that. You know, you're welcome to keep me company. When I'm a little more awake, I mean. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you later. Awkward. Alright, let's go talk to Echo, the man with the plan. Crazy man with a crazy beard and a crazy eye. It's twitching. Watch it. Say, look at that. Look who it is. Still not dead. How are things, Rook? I can never guess with you, Echo. I heard you helped drive off the traitors when Anaf attacked us. And it leaves me always wondering, what's your deal? I'm not so hard to understand. Why don't you try asking instead of telling? Why didn't you warn us about Anaf? Didn't I? How many times did I have to call him a traitor before you got the message? What, you want me to say it? Watch out, Anaf's going to murder your whole family? He didn't fill me in on the details. He was always like that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to convince you to off me, but listen, I don't need to know, so keep it to yourself. Why did you stick with him? I don't know, Rook. Family makes you do weird things. You know what the worst part is? We became kin when he married my sister. She died of a fever one night. But she didn't. She wasn't sick. He killed her. I don't know why he did it. Maybe he just felt like it. I was so furious, I got so angry that I... I wanted him to beg. I could kill him without a second thought, but that, that wasn't enough. I wanted him to feel sick about it, puke his guts out. And somehow, somehow that turned into... overtime. He never cared, and I just gave up. And did what he wanted. Don't know how it happened. But when I attacked you in Frostveller, guess I'll just say it wasn't my idea. Well, I want him to stay with us. Had no plans to go anywhere. So you're going to let me walk around with my own axe and everything? That doesn't mean I'm not watching you. I can accept that. You're a good man. And I need to take a piss. <laughs> you're not the only busy man around here, you know. You shake your head as the heckle steps away from the camp. 
Well, that's going to do it for the, the true and once in future episode 15. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed. That was about to be the worst episode I have ever seen in my entire life, and I was about to weep openly on the microphone, guys. But it turned out to be just somewhat horrible, not really, really terrible. I have to figure out how to stop starving my people to death. And when people are supposed to show up, they need to show up. Anyway, that's going to do it for me today, guys. Thanks again for joining me, and I will look forward to seeing you guys in the very next episode. Until then, guys, my name's Bumpy McSquiggums, and I will see you later. <laughs>